Which rookie wide receiver do you prefer in Dynasty, Zay Flowers or Rashi Rice? All that and more in this episode of the Lot Don Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can check out her work behind the steel curtain, Yahoo, and Pro Football Focus. On today's show, we're going to preview a little bit of the championship round coming up on Sunday in the NFL. Uh, we're going to talk about Brock Purdy's dynasty value. We'll talk about Isaiah Pacheco, where he uh, falls among dynasty running backs. But one of the cooler matchups this weekend is the battle between the rookie receivers, Rashi Rice of the Chiefs and Zay Flowers of the Ravens. You and I are both big fans of these players. But which one do you prefer in Dynasty? Marcus, it has got it, this isn't even close for me. It's got to be Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rashi Rice, who actually in the latest batch of Dynasty ADP ranked three spots behind Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers came in was drafted in on average as wide receiver 20 in the month of January. Rashi Rice coming in at wide receiver 23. Now, I'm a huge, huge Zay Flowers fan. I loved watching him play football, Marcus. But I talked about him uh, as my biggest price mismatch here on, I think it was about a week ago show, uh, where we reviewed some of our, our biggest kind of question marks in terms of Dynasty ADP. Zay Flowers was 100% mine. Ranked as the wide receiver 32 in fantasy points per game as a rookie. Uh, 29th, like in, in average depth of target, which you, I, I hate that because it relies too much on yards after the catch. Rashi Rice also down there in yards after the target or yards after uh, average depth of target. But you look at, I, I think, the situation here for Rashi Rice and his ability to become this team's wide receiver one, even if they bring in another body here in the Kins City Chiefs offense, I think that's probably necessary, A, because Rashi Rice pr played primarily a slot role. Um, I do think he is capable of playing on the outside, but I, you know, we're going to get the greatest mismatch in the field for Rice is definitely over the middle. So I think that role for him as a slot guy is absolutely perfect. They can bring in an outside receiver and still maintain Rice's role here in the slot. Zay Flowers, while I do think, you know, he's a high value player and I think he brings to this offense an element of, you know, yards after the catch ability, miss force tackles after the catch. Like, I don't know that I view him as the potential alpha wide receiver one for this team. Yeah, this one's tough. Um I really like Zay Flowers a lot coming out of Boston College. And actually, I've liked a lot of what I've seen from him uh, during the regular season. You mentioned the dot. I mean, at the beginning of the season, it was like laughably low. Like all of his targets were coming within like five yards of the line scrimmage. As the season went on, they started to give him more looks down the field. I, I do anticipate, Kate, as he grows as a player and as Lamar Jackson develops more trust into him, we're going to see them take more shots down the field to, to Zay Flowers. Like that's... That's clear. So I'm I'm buying Zay Flowers in Dynasty, but I'm not buying him over Rashi Rice because I think Rashi Rice has a chance to be like a top 10 to top 12 Dynasty wide receiver right away for a couple of different reasons. Like, obviously, the most important, you're tied to Patrick freaking Mahomes. Like, that matters, right? Like, you have the best quarterback in the league, and he's not going anywhere. So that, that matters a lot. The second is that you just saw all season long the trust that Mahomes had in Rice, like by week seven, it was just so clear that he was the most trusted receiver on this team. He was the one that was getting end zone looks. He was the one that Mahomes was going to in big situations. That matters. And you see his ability to make plays after the catch in that bad weather game in Miami when it was freezing cold. He had a monster game in that one. 
He's got the size. He's a good athlete. He makes plays after the catch. I, I won't be surprised at all, Kate, if he's 1,300 yards and double-digit touchdowns next year because he wasn't all that far away from doing it this year. Yeah, throughout the fantasy season, so I'm I'm talking heading into week 18, so through the first 17 weeks of the season, I'm considering that the fantasy season, by the way. Yeah, if you play yeah. in week 18, we have to have another discussion, but that is for another show. You're a booger eater, yep. <laughs> yeah, you are a booger eater for sure if you still play fantasy in week 18. But through the first 17 official weeks of the fantasy season, Rashi Rice ranked 26 among wide receivers with 937 receiving yards. He was tied for the 12th most receiving touchdowns. He didn't even start until week seven. That is what is so miraculous about him. Um, among wide receivers with 100 plus targets through that time span, he led the league in passer rating when targeted, catch percentage, uh, ranked top 10 in receiving yards after contact, yards per route run. Like, from an analytics standpoint, like both of them, I think, pass the eyeball test by a huge mile. Rashi Rice gets the the analytics pass far ahead of Zay Flowers. And then if you want to throw in draft capital for a tiebreaker, obviously Zay Flowers gets the edge there, but it's not a significant enough difference to matter, which it leads me to Rice. All roads lead to Rashi Rice. And you just look at the system. Obviously, I think we saw in 2023, the Ravens found a much better and, and smoother passing game while still emphasizing the run. I just, I don't think you're ever going to have to worry about what is this offense going to come out and do with Patrick Mahomes. They're going to funnel the ball through Patrick Mahomes because he's Patrick freaking Mahomes. Do you remember like early in the season, like in October, November, when we were getting really excited when Rashi Rice would run like 30 routes in a game because he was stuck behind Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony and Markel's Valdez scaling. And there was games where Justin Watson was running more routes than he was. Yeah. Now it's just clear. He's the best receiver on this team. And that might even include Travis Kelsey. And it, I, I think one of the reasons this offense started to get a little bit better at the end of the year is because they just made Rashi Rice a full time player in this mm -hmm. offense. And you've seen it in the playoffs. Like this offense looks totally different than it did midway through the season when they were really struggling to move the ball. Rashi Rice is probably my biggest buy of any player in dynasty this year. And I know the price keeps going up and up, but I'm willing to pay it because okay, I, I just have a hard time believing by the time we get to like October next year, like, why are you going to have Devontae Smith ranked ahead of Rashi Rice? I know Devontae Smith has the first round draft capital, but he's the number two receiver on the Eagles rather than the number one receiver in Kansas City. Why am I going to have or why am I going to have Michael Pittman or G Jordan Addison or DK Metcalf ahead of Rashi Rice? I'm all in. All in. I'm all in as well. And I mean, folks, uh, th this is why. You should have been listening to us if you're a new listener. I wish you would have caught us, you know, mid-season a little bit. Uh, before the season, even, we were all in on Rashi Rice, and it's paying huge dividends. And I still think even buying him it, it on that rising price curve here, there's still a lot of, of momentum still to gain. All right, let's talk about uh, Isaiah Pacheco, the Chiefs running back, uh, who – I saw a great tweet from a Cowboy player, Jordan Lewis. Uh, it said, Isaiah Pacheco runs like he bites, which I think is really, really funny. Uh, I, I love the way that Pacheco has played in the playoffs, but let's talk about his dynasty value moving forward next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the, the opportunity to get something off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who is un unbiased in your life. So today I want to tell you how I really feel about something, maybe something that you've been, even been thinking about this week. I really want the Ravens to go to the Super Bowl. I Listen, I like Patrick Mahomes. I like Travis Kelsey. I don't mind Taylor Swift, but Lamar Jackson might be one of my favorite players in the league. So I really want him to go to the Super Bowl. I think that would be so much fun. Uh, so there, I said, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking the same thing. Uh, therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports teams are rooting for the Ravens to beat the Chiefs in the championship round. And it's important to get some things off of your chest every once in a while. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and convenient and suited to your schedule. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab, or you can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet a layup with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We wanted to let you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Okay. Let's talk about Isaiah Pacheco who has really increased his dynasty value this year. According to dynasty league football, his ADP is all the way up to RB 13. Does that feel right for you? It feels a little high for me, Marcus. And that is kind of one of the the things I'm going to be probably pondering uh, through this weekend. And if they continue to advance here in the NFL postseason. Isaiah Pacheco, obviously he has been sort of everybody's favorite, you know, late round underdog story besides Brock Purdy. Like you look at the way he plays football, you look the way you look at the way he runs. He he gives every single run about 130 percent. And what I love about watching him play is it looks like he runs every attempt like it will be his last in the NFL and he never takes it for granted. But are we getting a little too disillusioned with the story? I mean, looking at his production this year, he ranked 15th in fantasy points per game, 14th in rushing yards per game. He's dealt with, you know, some some health issues. Uh, so kind of hard to necessarily evaluate. Ranked uh, 26 among running backs in terms of yards per touch, um, 11th in terms of breakaway run rate. You'll take that. But is RB13 a little bit too high for this running back who – doesn't have significant draft capital. I know this isn't a great running back class that's coming in in terms of, you know, a, a true front runner for RB1, but the consensus seems to be that there's still some depth here in this running back class. Is there a chance that maybe, you know, not through free agency, but maybe even through the draft that Isaiah Pacheco stumbles into some competition and we've missed out on a, a sell high window for Isaiah Pacheco? This one's tough because uh, we know that in the past that the Chiefs like to use multiple running backs. Like Jarek McKinnon is somebody who we actually had a bet over at, at one point this year. I'm sure you remember that for a, a second. But uh, Pacheco is one of the guys that I really like to watch, but I am a little bit worried for the same reasons. It does feel like they're going to bring in somebody else. Jarek McKinnon's like 32 years old. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is a free agent after this year, and I've got a hard time believing that he's going to be back. Uh, in free agency. So or, uh, he'll be back through free agency. They'll probably draft somebody or they'll sign a veteran. Maybe they go out and try to get an AJ Dillon or a Devin Singletary or somebody like that, just to add some competition. The real concern for me, Kate is the injuries. I mean, between he had a shoulder injury last year that caused him uh, that he had to get off season surgery on. He's had some lower body issues uh, this year that have limited him a little bit. But then you look at the ADP, and if you're going to bring him down, you got to obviously push some running backs, backs ahead of him. So I look at the guys that are going directly after Isaiah Pacheco. Josh Jacobs, would you rather have Josh Jacobs than Pacheco? Yes, absolutely. I'll take Josh Jacobs, who's got the first round draft capital, who obviously is aging. He's got a much higher touch total on the body, but. Josh Jacobs might be stumbling into a handsome bag of money that some team is going to commit to him. Now, 
obviously this is a very competitive free agency period with, you know, Derek Henry, like there's, there's so many big names that are about to hit the market. So between him, Saquon Barkley, who knows who's going to get the biggest payday and, and what that actually is going to play out to be in this current market. But I do think that there's going to be a team more willing to invest in both financially in Josh Jacobs and from a standpoint of like giving him every opportunity because of that draft capital, because just we're, we're one year removed from a rushing title in the league. Like I'll take Josh Jacobs. I'm with you. Uh, that's the one I, I looked at when I was looking at the ADP this morning that I thought, yeah, I would rather have Josh Jacobs. Uh, the other one, Tony Pollard at RB 16. That one's a little bit iffy for me. I could go either way. Uh, but some of the other names, uh, DeAndre Swift at RB15, Javante Williams at RB17, your guy Tajay Spears at RB18, uh, Austin Eckler. I think for the most part, I would take Pacheco over all those guys. So I think I'm only moving him down a spot. But if he has a really big game against Baltimore, one of the best run defenses in the NFL, and then he has another awesome game in the Super Bowl, and he's kind of the reason why the Chiefs win this third Super Bowl, it's going to be really, really hard not to push him up because still has two years left on his contract. Has come through for this team in big moments. I, I think his, I think his dynasty value could be on the move this weekend. Yeah, I think that could be the case in either direction, which is why the AFC Championship game is going to be so crucial for Isaiah Pacheco fantasy managers moving forward because it can really swing the fences either way in any direction, and I'm. Not sure that we know exactly where that's going to go just yet. All right. We're going to talk about Brock Purdy in his dynasty value, because I do think this is a big game for him from public perception. Uh, maybe di hopefully dynasty managers don't overreact too much to one singular playoff game. But before we do that, Kate, who are you rooting for at this Ravens Chiefs game? I'm just curious. I'm I'm very torn on this one because I love the Ravens. I think they're the better team. I don't love the Ravens because I'm a, a Steelers fan, obviously, but I love Lamar Jackson. I'm a huge Lamar Jackson supporter. The Ravens defense is good. I'm probably going to root for the Ravens, yes. even though I, I hate myself for it. I'll probably banish, be banished from Steelers Nation. No, you won't be. I, I think there's a large portion of Steelers fans that are rooting for the Ravens this weekend. Are there really? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, because if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, that's the third Super Bowl like in the last five years, right? Yeah. Starting to if close nothing else, the dynasty we, a little bit. Yeah, we we just don't want to uh, perpetuate the continued dynasty. Yeah, there, you there you go. There uh, you go. All right, let's talk about Brock Purdy, who had a rough game against the Packers last week. Do you still trust him in your dynasty leagues? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, all you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is the most fun that I've ever had playing DFS. Uh, because there's so many different players and so many different stat projections to choose from. Plus, Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return for the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to prizepicks.com slash NFL. And use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricepix.com slash LOCKDOWNNFL and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. On Monday's show, we're going to break down all of the action from Championship Weekend, so make sure you tune in for that. Just a reminder, every Wednesday... We do a mailbag episode with Matt Williamson. So go ahead, start getting your questions in. I have my DMs open. You can send me questions uh, that way. Uh, we would love to have you guys ask Matt as many questions as possible. But, Kate, okay, let's talk about 49ers-Lions on Sunday. There was a report last Saturday that came out that the 
49ers did a lot of research and were trying to convince Tom Brady to come out of retirement for the 2023 se- season uh, to basically replace Brock Purdy, have Pur- Purdy go on the bench. Purdy, Purdy obviously goes on to have a great season, did not play well in the first playoff game. How much do you think this game on Sunday means for his dynasty value overall? I think it means a decent, decent amount here, uh, especially with the fact that uh, I, you know, I'm not going to speculate that this guy's headed to the San Francisco 49ers, but let's not forget Kirk Cousins, who has that connection to Kyle Shanahan is hitting mm-hmm. free agency this year. And he's already kind of come out to say, like, I've made all the money I need to in my life. Like he's clearly in position where he wants to win a ring. And I mean, Marcus, it's not just the you know last couple of or it, it's not just the last playoff game that he had some difficulties in. Right. It was like. The, the game against Baltimore uh, just mm-hmm. a, a few weeks ago. That was just on Christmas. Uh, 255 yeah. passing yards, zero touchdowns, four interceptions. Like, I do think that the, the string of games where he just hasn't quite looked himself, um, you know, for a guy that has been incredibly efficient throughout the entire season, we haven't seen that efficiency over the last four weeks. And, and I do think that, this is going to be sort of, you know, one of those games where recency bias wins out a little bit. If Brock Purdy comes out, uh, people are going to be willing to write off this Green Bay Packers game and the the four interception game against the Ravens. That's going to be out of the picture. I mean, from a stat standpoint, you can't ask for better than what he did. No. He led the league in, in EPA. Uh, led the league in passer rating, red zone accuracy, completion. Uh, per, uh, completion percent everything basically literally everything like there there wasn't anything you could do fantasy points per drop back even uh rank top three like there wasn't much more you could ask him to do but again this is one of those situations where i think recency bias might win out a little bit if they don't come out and look stellar in this game i think kyle shanahan we've already seen he's got a wandering eye at the quarterback position for a while now um I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, this is a situation where he at least explores options this off season. If we don't see a stunning game, I'm not saying that's correct. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but would it surprise me? No. Kate, I couldn't agree more. I, I really try not to overreact to one game when it comes to dynasty, because it just matter. your resume matters so much more than one game. But for the, all the reasons you mentioned, like if if the 49ers come up short this weekend and they lose at home because the quarterback struggled, we've already seen Kyle Shanahan be, I mean, you said a wandering eye. I think that's being nice. Like I think he's always actively looking for a potential replacement. Even when there was Jimmy Garoppolo, they, they, they went up and they traded for Trey Lance. He wanted Mac Jones. There was some rumors about them trying to trade for Sam Darnold before they were flirting with Tom Brady. You mentioned the connection with Kirk cousins. Like I do think if, if they come up short this week, you're going to see some drastic changes in San Francisco because this would be yet again, another year where they get to the NFC championship game and they can't come through on the flip side. If he goes out there and he has, you know, 300 yards and four touchdowns, which is very possible against this Lions defense, which is like Swiss cheese in the secondary. Uh, maybe that goes to to really help his status in San Francisco. They start to work on contract extension after the following year. I, I, I Again, I don't want to say this is a big game for Brock Purdy, but in all reality, it really is. It is. And we know that Kyle Shanahan's doghouse is not. A it's not where you want to be. No, this is not, and he has no qualms, no, no concerns, no, no questions about putting you in the doghouse if he feels you belong there, regardless of your, your, you know, draft capital, regardless of what you've done for the franchise. If you're not pulling your weight, he, he has, you know, utilized that doghouse in the past. So I do think he has a lot to play for. And obviously this is like a very much real life kind of question here that we're applying to fantasy. And I think this is the perfect example of like, you couldn't have asked for a a better statistical profile from Brock Purdy in this season, but this weekend could be paramount to maintaining his dynasty value, despite all of the success that we've seen from him. And I think if he has a really big game, Kate, you'll see him go above like Tua 
in dynasty ADP. And if he really struggles, I, I could, wouldn't be surprised if he goes down two or three spots. I, I know Jordan love was being drafted behind him going into the month of January. I got to believe that's going to change regardless of what happens uh, on Sunday. I think, I, I think by the time we get to February, he's going to be maybe inside the top 10 quarterback. So just something to monitor, see how Brock Purdy f- performs this weekend. And then I want to see what the national reaction uh, is to his performance. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every single day. Go check out the channel on YouTube. We post videos every single day over there. Kate does a fantastic job with all the shorts that she posts. Check those out as well. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Monjuke. Check out her work at Behind the Steel Curtain, at Yahoo, at Pro Football Focus. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here on Monday.